I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast, For the Health of It, Episode 4. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast, and you'll never miss an episode on how to naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. What we're talking today is alcohol and how alcohol affects your body. And not just the fact that it makes you drunk. Why does it make you drunk? How does it impact the brain long term, short term, and maybe some alternatives for you? If you need it to relax, if you need it to feel good, I'm going to give you lots of alternatives that you can try as well. And that's what I do. I hadn't had a drink, oh gosh, almost 30 years now. And the reason was I used to drink. I mean, like everybody else in high school, we'd go, you know, play football or go go out to, you know, play basketball at night, go out for a drink. And I never liked it. And the reason I didn't like it is I like being on top of my game. I like being in control of my environment. And that's one of the reasons I enjoy doing radio so much because it really makes my brain work. Got to think hard and fast and pull stuff out of my brain, you know, in, in a second notice. And I just found I I didn't enjoy not being on top of my game. So what I would do, I remember going to football parties. We, you know, we had a, a, I played football four years of high school before that as well. And afterwards we'd go to somebody's house, like my friend Mike Trouss's house. And we'd all sit around and have kegs. Of course, (laughs) it was cool back then. The parents would be like, well, don't, if you drink, don't tell anyone you're drinking at my house. And of course we did, you know, we didn't tell anyone. But I'd stand there with a beer. When nobody's looking, I'd throw it into the bushes. Give me another one. Trying to be cool. And then I finally realized I'm not going to lose any friends if I don't drink. In fact, I'll probably make more friends because especially in today's environment, they want somebody to drive. And that's what I do. If we go out my friends, I'm driving. I'm good if you guys want to have a drink, but I'm going to drive everybody. That's the rules. And everybody's like, cool, man, that's great. So I realized that you can have a lot more fun being healthy than you can being drunk. And you live a lot longer and (laughs) you don't wake up feeling like junk the next day. So we talked a little bit about red wine and how it's not really that good for you and how there's a gazillion other things you can do, like eating more fruits and vegetables. Uh, Drinking alcohol to reduce your risk of heart disease and dementia. I'm sorry, folks. I ain't buying it. There's a lot of other things you can do. Eat a nutritious diet. You know, get get your omega-3 fatty acids if you want to deal with brain and heart function. Most of us don't get enough omega-3 fatty acids. And the first thought is, well, Dr. Joe, I eat fish. And my fish is supposed to have omega-3 fatty acids. Well, where do fish come from? Fish don't produce omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids come from algae that are eaten by smaller fish, that are eaten by bigger fish, that are eaten by the big fish. And I don't know how many other steps there are in there. So fish don't produce omega-3 fatty acid. Fish get it from eating ultimately algae. That's the form of omega-3 fatty acids I take every day because that's the kind that I think everybody needs. And so I know my brain, my heart, everything needs omega-3 fatty acids. I don't eat animal products. And if you're eating farm-raised fish, here's an irony for you. Most people are eating farm-raised fish, whether it's catfish, Atlantic salmon is farm-raised. Most fish that you're eating today is farm-raised. Unless it says wild-caught, it's farm-raised. And if it's not wild-caught, the fish are not eating up the food chain. They're being fed things like corn or soy, which is loaded with omega-6 fatty acids which in large quantities cause inflammation. So a little bit of omega-6, not a lot, fine. You should have one omega-6 to one omega-3. Most of you are getting about 20 omega-6s to one omega-3. Really messing with yourself. So I want you to consider this. If you're eating fish for omega-3 fatty acids, you're probably not getting any and probably getting the bad omega-6 fatty acids. So if you're going to eat fish wild-caught only, I don't know why you'd want to eat fish, actually. I haven't had fish in a long time. No, not a big, was never a big fan, but there's, there's 120,000 foods you can eat. You don't have to worry about something like, oh, I have to eat a little bit of fish. And eat. No, there's plenty of food. If you cut out the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, you're going to get more than enough nutrients from other foods, even if you don't take supplements, which I think you should. But even if you don't, you're going to get a lot of nutrients there. You got to change your mind when it comes to things like traveling, Go out and travel, but you don't have to go out and have a drink when you out and travel. Go out and have a seltzer water. That's what I do. I just have a, cl- a seltzer or a club soda. 
difference. You might not know the useless fact. You might not know. Club soda has salt in it. Seltzer doesn't. They're both bubbly waters. Club soda has salt in it. So have that. You will be amazed. Oh, and the other benefit. How much money are you going to save? Holy cow. Gosh, if I go out and so, you know, if, I, if I'm out on a date or something and a gal orders a glass of wine, I'm like, that's like $12, $15. I, I, I eat a whole week like for that. Now, I'm not cheap. I don't care what somebody else does. If you want to drink, that's your choice. I support whatever your decision is. But when you're buying it, man, you're going to save a whole lot of money if you're not buying the booze to go with it. And you feel better. And I, I have friends of mine. One of my friends, you know, she was uh, married at one point and her and her husband did a lot of drinking and partying. And unfortunately, he died of cancer. And she said, I fell into that lifestyle very easily. It was really easy for me to go out and party. And we'd go out to business meetings and we'd go out to conventions. And she said, we drank a lot. And she said, when I watched him die, died of esophageal cancer, I thought, wow, this is really bad. Maybe I need a drink because I'm all stressed out. She didn't get the connection. And then finally, she started listening to my shows and reading my books. And she went, wow, now I see where it came from. So you can give it up if you want to, I promise you. And you'll save a ton of money. And if you like the flavor of it, well, there's other things you could find you like the flavor of. I, I like the flavor of a lot of things here. Let's talk about depression and alcoholism. You're probably already aware, we talked about omega-3 fatty acids are good for your heart health. Researchers at Indiana University School of Medicine have uncovered surprising new links between omega-3 fatty acids, mood, and alcohol abuse. DHA, that's the essential fatty acid, it's one of the omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA, those are the ones that you need. For us to stay healthy, we need it in all stages of our life, from the minute you're conceived right on to the day you die. But there's a cruel twist. It turns out that we can't produce our own supply of omega-3 fatty acids, so we have to get them from other sources. Now, scientists have already suspected there might be a link between some psychiatric disorders and omega-3 fatty acids, and sure enough, there was. They gave DHA, one of the omega-3 fatty acids, with, to mice that were bipolar. Now, who decides if a mice, mouse is bipolar? I don't know this. And they had depression and stress-activated mania. When they gave them the DHA, it blew away their depression. It helped with the mania. They were no longer manic. Pretty cool stuff. But something else happened. I'm going somewhere with this on alcohol, so hang on there with me. When the researchers took a look at the brains of the DHA-treated mice, they found that the omega-3 fatty acids were acting on the same genes that psychiatric drugs were used, were designed to target. So the psychiatric drug is affecting this part of the brain. So is the omega-3s. It appeared that they found a natural side effect free alternative to psychiatric drugs. Works. Turns out bipolar mice, uh, like many bipolar humans, had a taste for alcohol and they would drink it to excess. When they treated them with omega-3 fatty acids, they suddenly stopped abusing the alcohol. So this is what I'm getting at. And I just got an email from somebody I know the other day too. And she said a friend of hers, uh, she's with him. He's very stressed out. His son is uh, a meth addict. And she's very holistically oriented. And she said, you know, what do you do? Well, the brain needs nutrients to function. And when it's not getting the proper nutrients, it can, it can get external stimulants like meth, alcohol, uh, promiscuous behaviors, gambling. So these things stimulate the dopamine receptor sites in the brain. And we do find, too, that people that have a tendency toward addiction have less dopamine receptor sites, just anatomically less dopamine receptor sites than people that aren't prone to addiction. Why is it that some people can have a drink and they're good and an alcoholic has a drink and they're off the wagon? Research is now showing it could be a dopamine receptor site issue. So what do you do? You're not getting as much pleasure because you don't have as many dopamine receptors as somebody who's normal. I'll, I'll use normal here lightly. So you want to externally stimulate those dopamine receptor sites. Dopamine's the neurotransmitter in your brain that gives you pleasure. And the problem is when you start stimulating these, anything really in the body, from an external source, you stop producing your own. Whether it's hormone therapy, whether it's uh, psychiatric drugs, you stop producing a lot of your own. And so now you have a problem. So what do you need? More drugs. So you got to wean yourself off these things. And you do that by getting your body healthy. 
So when the body's healthy, it starts producing its own natural dopamine in this case. And you don't have that crazy desire. But once you have a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of sugar, bam, you want more. Remember a while ago, I was up in New York visiting some family and I had a, it was a vegan bagel and it was a New York bagel. I mean, how do you resist that? If you've never had one, you don't know what you're missing. It's pretty amazing. And boy, I, I had one and it was delicious and it was, I just ate it plain. It was still hot. And about a, a couple hours later, I thought I can get, I, I can go for some more bread. I think I'll stop and get some bread. I love New York bread. And then I thought, wait a minute, what did I just do? I stimulated those pleasure centers in my brain with sugar, the, the bagel, and then I wanted more. So the secret to getting off any of these addictive things like alcohol or drugs is you can't have them around because if they're around, chances are you're going to take them. If I have bad food in the house, again, I'm a vegan, so it's got to be vegan, but there's bad vegan food too, brownies and cookies and cupcakes and donuts. And if they're in the house, I'm going to eat them. If they're not in the house, I'm not going to eat them. So you have to get whatever your addiction is away from you, even if it's a bad relationship. Some people get stimulated by a drama. You got to get away from it because every time you stimulate it just a little bit more, you're going to have a problem. Now, I did say, you know, kind of, let me get to my notes here on what to, what to do. Here we are. I got it down here. All right, I want to cover this in case I run out of time and then I'll go back to some other stuff here. If you're going to drink, and you shouldn't, if you're going to drink, and you shouldn't, here's some rules. Number one, if you drink, drinking reduces your body's production of something called vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone. These are chemicals in your brain and it prevents you from peeing. So you have anti vasopressin to stop you from peeing. So when you drink, it shuts down vasopressin so that you pee more. Do you ever notice how you drink one beer, you pee out three? Where those other two beers come from? Your body is giving up its own vital fluids to flush the alcohol out of the system. And so you're shutting down the vasopressin production so that you can flush the alcohol out of the system because alcohol destroys brain cells and your brain controls what? Everything. So if you're going to drink, you are going to shut down vasopressin. It's how the body works because you want to flush the alcohol out. Your body's smarter than you. You put it in, the body says, get this out of here. I don't want to cause brain damage. So you have to rehydrate yourself. So for every one drink, three glasses of water. That's a good rule to keep the vasopressin uh, kind of fighting nature there. A couple of things happen. Number one, you're going to drink a lot, a lot of fluids. So you're not going to want to drink more. Because remember, alcohol is a diuretic. It makes you pee. So you dehydrate. So what do you do? You get thirsty. So you want to drink more. So it's going to prevent you from making irrational decisions. Anyone ever make an irrational decision when they were drunk? Raise their hands. Whoever didn't raise their hands, probably lying. That's what alcohol does. It shuts down your prefrontal cortex. I want to get to that if I have time. But it shuts down your prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is the part of your brain that gives you logic and you understand consequences. It doesn't form till your 20s, actually. And so this is why children do crazy things. You're like, oh my gosh, you're going to kill yourself. What are you doing? Their prefrontal cortex hasn't properly formed yet or fully formed yet. And so they don't understand the risk. And they're, they're, they're fearless. As we get older, of course, the prefrontal cortex becomes more mature and we become more fearful. I'd like to consider it more logical. We don't do those stupid things we did when we were kids. Alcohol shuts down hypothalamus function and your prefrontal cortex function. Also affects your cerebellum. I'm going to get to what to do if you drink. Don't worry. I'm going to get there. We still got a few minutes. Cerebellum is the back part of your brain that controls balance and has a lot of vascularity, a lot of blood vessels. So when you drink alcohol, a lot of blood vessels there, it gets into the cerebellum, which affects your body's ability to balance, which is why you fall down when you drink. And if you've ever been really drunk and you lay down, you're holding on to the bed because it's spinning, it's affecting the cerebellum. And so this is why you shouldn't drive. This is why you shouldn't really do anything if you're drinking. Maybe sit home on a couch with a diaper on, perhaps, with a water jug next to you. Because you're going to hurt yourself or somebody else. You have to. may not be this time, but it will happen. And I don't want to be the one on the road when you're drunk driving. I've treated a lot of drunk driver patients. I'm a chiropractor. Again, my team of doctors, we treat uh, car accidents literally every day. We get a ton of them. Attorneys love sending patients to us because we do a real good job with the notes. Even adjusters. 
for an insurance company. They'll say, oh, it's Dr. Joe's office. He's fine. He knows what he's talking about. He's good. Whatever he says is fine. So we get a lot of referrals from attorneys because they know if the adjuster sees it and they see our name on it, chances are they're going to get, get a, a good settlement just because we don't cheat. We do things right. And so it's nice because I want to make sure the patient gets treatment. And I, it kills me when people go to these mills, we call them, where they just go in and they, they throw a hot pack on them and they poke them on the back a few times. They run up a five, six, ten thousand dollars bill and then dismiss them. And the patient never got treated. They could have got treated just as well as not getting treated. And they run up these incredible bills. The insurance company say, we're not going to pay this. They take a couple of dollars and they move on to the next patient. My concern is I want to get you well and keep you well, legitimately. Now, folks, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge in the Atlanta area. Uh, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. We'll set you up a time to come see us. We'll work on the nervous system, all 206 bones. We'll check them if we need to. We'll check the digestive system. We'll do a nutritional workup on you, tell you what to eat, what not to eat. If nothing else, at least please do Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source just to get some nutrients in your body. And I take them every day, sometimes twice a day. Those are on my website, drjoesposito.com. Got a bunch of other supplements too. Adrenal supplements, if you're under stress, you drink a lot of coffee, bags under your eyes, chances are the adrenals are burned out. Um, if you... Uh, not eating a very good diet, you're not probably getting B vitamins. We have a B vitamin supplement, a probiotic supplement, very big, a popular one among our patients uh, because most of us have eaten something that destroys the bacteria in your colon, like commercial meats and dairy products, many times have antibiotics in them, which kill the good bacteria. Uh, vitamin D3 is there, a bunch of other supplements. They're on the website, drjoesposito.com. If you want to make an appointment, we accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. Many times, even if we're not in your insurance network, it's cheaper to come in and see us than even using your insurance. I know it's a bizarre thing. I don't understand why it exists that way. The insurance companies, they they amaze me. They're a fascination to me. So even sometimes out-of-network benefits are better than in-network benefits. And once again, if you've ever been in a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. So you need to come see us. DrJoeEsposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. We'll get you set up as soon as possible. I promised you, man of my word, I'm Italian. I was taught you give your word, you keep it. Things you do if you are going to drink. God, I shouldn't even do this part of the show. I'm not giving you permission to drink. What I'm telling you is if you do, because I'm a realist, this is what you need to do. A couple of supplements you might want to consider. N-acetylcysteine. It's, it, it's abbreviated NAC. It's an amino acid, a form of amino acid cysteine, and it helps produce something called glutathione, which will reduce the acetaldehyde toxicity, the alcohol toxicity. That's what causes a lot of the hangovers. So by taking N-acetylcysteine about 30 minutes before you start to drink, it might help lessen the damage to your liver, but also the hangover effects. Cardamom seeds. This is from ancient Ayurvedic medicine from India. Cardamom's a little pod. It's used oftentimes in Indian cooking. And if you break open the pod, it has little seeds in there. And those little seeds, uh, they look like poppy seeds. You want to chew about five or six of them about a half hour before you start drinking. And I can't find research on how it works, but I think it helps you not flush out so much water. It, 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 it holds water in your body. You got to drink a lot of water as well, but that's something else you might want to consider. B vitamins, we talked about that. N-acetylcysteine works better if it has thiamine or vitamin B1. Alcohol wastes vitamin B1. It flushes it out of your system. Vitamin B6 can also help with hangovers and toxicity. So since alcohol depletes B vitamins, the B vitamins are required to help get the toxins out of your system, taking a B vitamin would work. We have a really good B vitamin, Dr. Joe's B Complex. That's on the website, drjoesposito.com. Most of you should probably be taking that every day anyway. Milk thistle. Milk thistle contains something called silmarian and uh, silibin. These are antioxidants that protect your liver from the toxic effects of the alcohol. Not only has silmarian been found to increase glutathione, but it also may help regenerate liver cells. So when people come in with toxic liver, many times we'll put them on a liver supplement and many times it'll contain silmarian in it. So milk thistle is the, the, the thing that it, it comes from. Vitamin C. Alcohol depletes your body of vitamin C and that's really important to prevent the damage occurring to the liver. One animal study showed vitamin C was even more protective to the liver than silmarian, or what we talked about milk thistle, after exposure to alcohol. Now, there's two types of vitamin C on the market. You'll see something called ascorbic acid, and then you'll see something called vitamin C. 
Ascorbic acid is a, a synthetic version. It's only one eighth of the vitamin C molecule. I do not recommend you take ascorbic acid. It doesn't work nearly as well as true vitamin C. Same thing with colds and flu. Okay, the research was done originally on vitamin C, pure vitamin C. Now, sometimes you'll see studies saying, well, it did a study with vitamin C and it didn't work. Every study I've ever seen showed that it was the uh, ascorbic acid form, not the true vitamin C. Where do you get vitamin C from? Fruits and vegetables. Where do you get fruits and vegetables? Things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, eating fruits and vegetables. But again, if it's not organic, it's not going to have the same level of nutrients as an organic would. So that's why I recommend maybe taking supplements as well. Magnesium. It's another nutrient depleted by alcohol. And it's one of the most important ones because a lot of us are deficient in magnesium. Again, as a chiropractor and a pain management specialist, patients come to us all the time. Dr. Joe, I have pain. So if you, I did a show a couple of weeks ago on neurotransmitters. I think it was two or three weeks ago. It's on my website, drjoesposito.com, on brain function. And the neurotransmitters help block pain. And if you're not producing the proper amounts of neurotransmitters, you're not blocking your pain. And inevitably, when I have patients come in, if they have a digestive problem, if they have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, they're not digesting their food properly. And so we have to adjust or physically manipulate or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And when we do, what happens is it helps tremendously with the uh, digestive system. And so if you have uh, acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, many times we need to manipulate or manually pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. And when we do, that helps digestion, which helps absorption, which helps produce neurotransmitters, which helps block the pain. So a lot of patients that come to us who have pain, we have to work on their digestive system for them. So it's, it's not just chiropractic care. We do the stomach. We do the, the uh, nutrients as well. Uh, Magnesium-rich foods. Nuts and seeds. There goes the Dr. Joe's fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds. Kind of important stuff. If you take a magnesium supplement, I'm okay with that, but be careful. Because magnesium supplements are what they make milk of magnesia out of. And what does milk of magnesia do? Gives you loose stools. So if you're going to go out drinking and you can't control your bowels and you took magnesium, eh, that could make for a very unpleasant evening. So I'd rather see you get the magnesium from your food, like maybe a few handfuls of nuts or seeds before you go out. And that can help as well because you are going to flush those things out of your system. They are going to be wasted when you drink alcohol. And so you've got to be careful uh, not to just waste it. So put them back in. And that's why it's so important that you do things before, take some supplements, during, drink a lot of water, make sure you're eating something as well because food is going to be important. And when you eat, don't go out and eat hamburgers like we used to do. You get those little square hamburgers up in New Jersey, in Passaic, New Jersey, right there on Main Street. If you're from that area, you know what I'm talking about. You know the company. I won't say money air. And we'd buy as many of these little square hamburgers as we could and shove them down our throats. One of the stupidest things you can do when you're drinking, because your body's being depleted of nutrients and you're giving it more food that doesn't have nutrients in it, or very little nutrients. So if you're going to drink, you got to got to prepare for it, almost like a marathon. you got to train, drink a lot of water, take supplements. Again, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, B vitamins, adrenal supplements. When you're drinking, good food, salads, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Eating light. Afterwards, making sure you get enough rest, making sure you rehydrate the next day, make sure you replace those B vitamins. So if you're going to play in the big leagues, and I talk about this when it comes to romance, when it comes to alcohol consumption, if it comes to anything, if you're going to play in the big leagues, you got to follow the rules. And if you don't follow the rules, chances are you're not going to be happy with the results. So, folks, if you're just tuning in, you missed an amazing show. But we're going to put it on our podcast. It's going to be on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We put a lot of good stuff out on YouTube. Sign up for my newsletter. Uh, lots of good stuff on the newsletter. We send out when we have specials on supplements, if we have a lecture coming up. We have a lot of live lectures. I'd love to invite you to them. They're a lot of fun. We videotape the live lectures. We put that on the website as well. Uh, that's part of the podcast. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, we'd love to have you. Uh, DrJoeEsposito.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge in the Atlanta area. Love to have you come out and say hi uh, and get treated. No insurance, car insurances, good insurance, bad insurance, Medicare. We want to work with you, folks. And trust me, you can't afford not to get well. And it's relatively inexpensive for what you're getting. 
You're getting all our doctor's expertise, my expertise, uh, the treatment. Uh, we do a nutritional workup on all our patients. Some people want to talk just nutrition. 98% of them, when I meet with them or my staff meets with them and we check them out, they have physical problems as well. And they say, you know what? Let's just do it all and get it done. So that's on the website. If you want to make an appointment, drjoesposito.com. You can order the supplements. Also on Amazon. If you have an Amazon account, you can order supplements on the Amazon account as well. Um, because we want to be your doctors. We want to help you naturally get well and stay well. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, tell your friends about the show. Subscribe to my podcast. Subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for listening to For the Health of It. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on WSBRadio.com and on the WSB Radio app.